It's amazing to think how powerful of an effect words have on us. One doesn't need to look far into history to see that it's full of examples of how influential language is, and that the words we use reflect who we are. Language changes and adapts to culture, depending on which direction society is moving, and as we can see today, profanity is accepted more than ever. While the minds of the masses change continuously, the words of the King James Bible have stood the test of time, and demonstrates God's thoughts on explicit language with the precision of a two-edged sword. Let's turn to a passage to demonstrate God's hatred for vulgarity. Psalm 10 verses 4 to 7. The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. He hath said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. James 3 verses 5 to 8 Even so the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, and a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beasts, and of birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea, is tamed, and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. There are multiple examples in the Bible that demonstrates that the character of someone who curses and swears is not one of trustworthiness or honor. Someone who uses obscenity is someone who, quite frankly, doesn't care about how they are perceived and it shows an absolute lack of self-control. But now let's go even further and see what other things the scripture says about the type of language we should and should not use. Matthew 12 verse 34 O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. Colossians 3 verse 8 But now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 33 Be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. As demonstrated, if your heart is perverse, you're going to say perverse things. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that it's okay in certain instances to use profanity as some sort of social enhancer, but it shows it actually makes things worse. Now, it would be considered a no-duh that to abstain from profanity is something that a Christian ought to do, but how does God expect us to use our language? Here's some more passages on that issue. Romans 12 verse 2, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Philemon 1 verses 4 to 6, I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayers, hearing of thy love and faith, which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus, and toward all saints, that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. 
Imagine reading the epistle to the Romans for the first time, knowing that this is the word of God and knowing that you have in fact conformed to this world and that the communication you should have used for the glory of Christ was instead used for all types of filthy and disgusting obscenities. Some quotations professing Christians might even use profanity to quotations fit in. And one should ask why? Are they afraid that someone might accidentally find out that they are a Christian? If Jesus is our example, shouldn't we consider what he might say? Let's look at these verses and hear what Peter had to say about the Lord. 1 Peter 2 verses 21 to 24 For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, that ye should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously, who his own self bare our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye are healed. Jesus leading as an example, was found even at his death on his cross to have no guile found in his mouth. If Jesus is your king, you'll watch the words of your mouth. As words are so important to the Lord, the God of all creation, that he has given them to us in the Holy Bible, so that we may know him. Don't cheapen the importance of words. And if you are truly saved, start using them to glorify him that saved you, rather than ruining every chance you get to leave a good witness for Christ. You might just regret that someday. Matthew 12 verse 36 But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment.